Newburn Croy was the ninth child born on November 19, 1947, to Lena Gertrude Taylor Croy two days before her 39th birthday. His father, Robert Ira, had turned 45 earlier in the month. Uncle John was the only child out of 10 that shared the same birth month as his parents. Uncle John was named after both of his grandfathers, Newburn from his mom's side and John from his dad's. Uncle John's fourth great-grandfather, Fleming Bates, through his mother's lineage, was the first pastor appointed for Pigeon Creek Baptist Church, which was the first Baptist church established in the state of Florida. When Uncle Johnny was two in 1949, a baby brother was born on Christmas Eve. He was named Lawrence. Who knows, maybe Uncle Johnny was told he got a baby brother for Christmas if times were hard for the large family. The two of them rounded out the siblings and affectionately became known as the babies of the family. The two names were almost always used in the same sentence, John and Lawrence, Lawrence and Johnny. Once Uncle John told me, his oldest sibling, Uncle Bobby, he never remembered him being in the home. Uncle Bobby was 18 when Uncle John was, came along. By the time Uncle John was three, his three oldest siblings were already out of the house. He did remember when his sister, Aunt Vivian, and her husband came to town that Uncle Ethan would always take Uncle Lawrence and Uncle Johnny fishing. Maybe that's when Uncle John's love for fishing took anchor. <laughs> On November 14, 1969, Uncle John married the beautiful Miss Marie Esther Morton. Aunt Marie's niece, Jean Johnson, served as maid of honor. Uncle Bill Williams, brother-in-law of the groom, served as best man. Also on the same day, Uncle John's brother, Marine Corporal Carol Ralph Croy, married Miss Alma Jean Nipper. Uncle Bill and Aunt Dorothy stood up with them. Uncle Bill must have had a busy day being in two family weddings on the same day as the best man. Uncle John and Aunt Marie made their home in an apartment on West Oak Street here in Arcadia after returning from their honeymoon. Uncle John and Aunt Marie later moved out to Owens Community on a piece of Aunt Marie's family property. To the right of them, either through a path in the woods or by ways of County Road 760, Aunt Marie's sister, Irma and family, next her dad and her brother Alton, and then her sister Sue and family, all had homes in a row. In the same community lived Uncle John's sister, Aunt Dorothy and family, and on around the curve lived his sister, Iris and family. Uncle John and Aunt Marie started out in a camper trailer, then a mobile home, and built their forever home in 1974. Even while Uncle John and Aunt Marie dated and after marriage, they spent a lot of time in our house. For some unknown reason, I think they thought my parents were cool. <laughs> of course, I thought the two of them were cool, but my parents didn't fit that definition in my eyes at all. I remember how Uncle Johnny could sit on a back porch and tell joke after joke. He was an entertainer. If I could go back to the middle school the next week and remember just one of his jokes to tell my friends I thought I was hot stuff. Every Friday night, we'd load in the station wagon, Dan riding in the front between Daddy and Uncle Johnny. I would be in the back seat between Mama and Aunt Marie. Cigars and prison stories in the front, and cigarettes and GPW hospital stories in the back. <laughs> no one knew about secondhand smoke back then. <laughs> we would go down to the Dairy Queen on 41 in Port Charlotte. I'd carry a pad to take everyone's order. I was only pretty young at the time. And that still gets a chuckle from Uncle John and Aunt Marie to this day about me with my pad and pen. I would get out and place the order. You probably think, what's the big deal? But it was such a simple time of life and cheap entertainment. The girl would lean her head out and 
repeat the large order. Dan said Uncle John would say, poor little Michelle, everyone's going to think she's going to eat all that. <laughs> I remember sometimes when we got back to Arcadia, we would ride up to the DeSoto High School football game. We'd pull up to the fence there on Hillsboro Avenue so we could see the score. There was a boy I liked in the middle school. Daddy and Uncle John would say he had a peanut-shaped head. <laughs> They would swear they could find him in the football stands because of the shape of his head. Now that I think back, I gave them too much credit for having good eyesight with the response I would give them. Back then, Uncle Johnny and Aunt Marie were spontaneous. And I have to admit, my uncool parents were too. One time on a Sunday afternoon, we ended up in Orlando. Aunt Marie told Daddy, turn and go in there and we ended up with a car right at the Magic Kingdom gates. We were chased away because it was under construction. Aunt Marie always says that we were probably one of the first people to visit Walt Disney World. Another time, an afternoon drive ended up in Colquitt, Georgia at Aunt Marie's brother's house. We knew, never knew where the drive would lead or end. Back 50 years ago, there was a dear lady named Helen Strobel, and she wrote the Owens Community News for the Weekly Arcadian. One piece of news read like this, Mr. and Miss Lawrence Croy and Baby of Arcadia and Mr. and Mrs. Eddie Garner and children were supper guests of Mr. and Mrs. John Croy at their trailer home Thursday night. Now that was some important news. <laughs> Uncle John and Aunt Marie still took pleasure, pleasure in taking rides in their older age. They celebrated 50 years of marriage in 2019. A family cruise was planned by their daughters, Susan and Kim. Several nieces and nephews went cruising with the Croys. <laughs> If I had to pick one word to remember Uncle Johnny by, it would be the word humor. Now all the siblings are back together drinking knee-high sodas and laughter, and laughter is heard throughout heaven.